All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, we have a big fight going at Bellator 236. It is happening on December 21st, and the Bellator MMA Flyweight Championship is up for grabs. It's the main event of the evening when Alima Leigh McFarlane defends her title against Kate Jackson, and I've got Kate on the show today. How's your day going so far, Kate? Uh, yeah, great. It's my first, um, first full day in LA, so um, yeah, just looking around the place at the moment. A little different from the weather in Cornwall, I imagine, eh? <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely a little bit warmer, so um, <laughs> just the sun's just starting to come out, which is lovely. Yeah, no, but it seems like you very much represent for the area and stuff like that. It seems like a lot of the local, like, you know, Cornwall media outlets and stuff like that are really excited about this fight, as they should be. Do you really like to, you know, put on for the local community and represent on this kind of international scale? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, MMA is still, it's definitely growing in the UK and um, where I live, but it's still not um, anywhere near as well known as it is in America. So uh, just being able to represent the southwest of the UK, um, it's a really big deal for me, uh, just to show that it really is possible to um, do the sport at a high level. Yeah, because from what I was seeing in your backstory, it wasn't like when you started you had any specific goals in mind or like any grand illusion of what it was going to, you know, sort of turn into. But it's really turned into this intriguing thing. I mean, you say it's not like known as much nowadays, but how much have things grown since like when you you know got out there in May 2009 and kind of started the journey? Like what are the differences from then compared to now? Oh, massive difference. Um, I'm so lucky that, um, I mean, it would have been great if the amateur scene was around, um, that's around now, had been around when I started, but just to get to see it grow um, and to have started the sport just early enough to be able to do it full time um, as my career is um, it's amazing. It means a lot to me. Yeah, for sure. And it seems like you get in some great work over there at Concept Gym. And I also noticed you shouted out Flow Martial Arts and Pure Grappling as well for getting in some rounds. It seems like Steve Hollister is, you know, a big part of this camp. Who else is a big fixture heading into this fight as far as, like, getting you properly prepared? Um, yeah, my uh, Concept Gym is obviously the one I fight out of. But um, my sort of two jiu-jitsu teams... Um, Flow and pure grappling um, are also a major part of that. Um, and uh, Steve Hollister has been sort of working on my striking with him this year. He's uh, uh, our kickboxing coach, and he's got sort of a very old school karate background um, going back over forty years. So um, that's that's been really helpful addition um, this time round. Um, and my coach Mark Rowlett put an awful time and an awful lot of rounds um, into this fight as well. Yeah, I imagine uh, Kevin Darrington is a big part of things as well. I noticed it had been 10 years since uh, they started coaching at Concept Gym. Yes, um, yeah, he's been around um, a long time now. Uh, yeah, well over 10 years. Um, I've been working with him for about that long. So, um, yeah, getting my round belt from him and um, our head coach, Kenny Baker, um, meant a lot to me, really. Yeah, and I also noticed you uh, participated in grappling industries a little while ago, too, and you were talking about the experience with, like, the absolute stuff like that, and you are kind of joking around about, like, the larger judicas and stuff like that, and how you're going to be able to, like, hang a little better as you kind of get into that more. How does that inform your skills in a mixed martial arts context? Because I imagine doing pure grappling competitions like that very much keeps you sharp. Yeah, that was, uh, I did my first, my only so far grappling industries uh, competition in the summer in London. Um, and that was really cool. I loved the round robin format. Um, it meant sort of winning my division. Um, uh, I got to compete against all of the women in it. I think I, yeah, I submitted all of them as well. So um, I like that element of taking away any of the doubt from the sort of the knockout tournament. Um, so that, that's a really cool way of doing it. 
Yeah, for sure. Some great stuff. But also I was noticing in an interview that someone was mentioning that this is a chance for you to become the first British female athlete to hold a title in a major promotion. And you were saying how that hadn't even really crossed your mind necessarily. But with like a bit more time to kind of like think about it and like, do you, I guess, do you let yourself contemplate that? Or are you just like super focused on the fight and you don't let your mind wander and think about what it could be like to earn that kind of distinction? Um, a lot of it for me is the, the focus is on the fight itself um, more than what comes with it. But um, just the fact that I am the first British um, female to challenge for a major title, um, that's a real honour. It shows how, how much the sport's grown in the UK um, and what's now available for... Um, the amateurs coming through the scene now um, to achieve. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you got a great opponent ahead of you, so it makes sense you would be laser-focused in on that. To that point, though, I'm kind of wondering, what's your overall assessment of Alima Leigh McFarlane's skill set and what she brings to the table? Um, well, she's obviously very good at what she does because she's on on the team since she the belt the last two years. Um, she's got a wrestling background, um, she's got a solid submission grappling game, so for me, it, it, I'm very comfortable on the ground, and um, I'm looking forward to getting in there and finding out um, what she actually feels like, because uh, obviously there's only so much you can take from watching it on tape. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, you fought a lot of top level opposition. So I think that would be an interesting sort of challenge. I guess like, I mean, I, I was I was going to ask where does McFarlane rank among some of your career opponents that you've had, but I guess you would have to kind of get in there and sort of like feel it for yourself as opposed to just kind of thinking about it from like an on paper kind of perspective, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, you found in the past that you, you, know, you study opponents a lot, so you know what to expect from them, but it's not until that moment you actually make contact with them that you uh, you know pretty quickly like how how good their grappling or sort of wrestling game is from that point onwards um, it's one of the really interesting and frustrating things about the sport yeah for sure I mean and to that point like do you kind of watch a lot of like tape study on your opponents and stuff like that is that something you maybe allocate more to some of the people in your camp and you focus on your own efforts obviously you've alluded to the fact you've seen a bit of footage on her but is it like through a diligent like tape study kind of thing or is that more for your coaches um one of my coaches in particular <laughs> watches everything he can get his hands on obsessively um <laughs> and he makes me watch stuff more to point out things that um he thinks i should be aware of more than anything else so it's um I've watched her fights. It's, it's not something that I've spent um, a huge amount of time on, personally. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you got to focus on your own efforts and get out there so you can fluidly express yourself on the night of the fight, right? Yeah, for sure. No, definitely the way to do it. But normally when I have fighters on the show, I tend to ask them if there's like any go-to like genres of music they like to train to or like particular artists that maybe get them fired up but I've also talked to some fighters who don't really train to music much or it's kind of irrelevant in the sense of they want to replicate the conditions of fight night so they don't pay much attention to that where do you sit on that end of things though um it's kind of like the gyms I train in it's it's there as background noise um but it's not like when I train on my own um if I'm doing sort of if I'm doing hard cardio then I'll listen to music as a sort of bit of a distraction but um otherwise for uh, weightlifting um you know easy cardio i don't i tend to do it in silence almost um obviously we've just started playing christmas music um <laughs> so that was almost my that was a bit of a surprise because i haven't really christmas hasn't been much of a focus for me so um probably having the christmas music on in the dim um was sort of a, oh yeah, this is happening for everyone else. <laughs> 
Yeah, for sure. I get what you're saying on that end of things, but you've been really good with your time. I'm curious if there's anything you'd like to add as a parting thought as we're kind of wrapping up here, though. Um, I'm just really grateful to Bellator for this opportunity. Um, it means a lot. And I'm really, really hoping that we can um, both put on a good fight and a good show. Definitely think it looks like a good fight on paper, certainly. We got two top-notch flyweights going at it for the Bellator flyweight title. It goes down on December 21st. The main event, Alima Lay McFarland defending her title against Kate Jackson. Really appreciate all the time and insights there, Kate. Best of luck with the remaining part of your preparations, and have a great rest of your day, too. Thank you very much. See you, too.